if you ever find yourself in small towns, it's always fun to go check out the small gun store, small pawn store in the middle of nowhere. You can find some of the craziest, interesting guns in those stores, rare guns that you might not find in those big box store guns, stores that you're more familiar with in bigger cities. This is an example of that kind of gun. This is probably one of the more rare guns that I own, and this is a Sega 100. This was meant to be a true hunting gun that competed with the Browning automatic rifle, the bar, or the Remington, uh, what, 7800 7, or something like that. This was the semi-automatic rifle that was meant for hunting that came from the Klishnikov uh, manufacturers in Russia. And this is actually a rare gun that a lot of people don't know that is a rare gun. It came in 308 and 30 odd 6 And as you can see, this is set up as an AK-47, but it doesn't look like your typical Sega or AK-47 rifle. This is really meant as a hunting gun. You can see that the um, gas um, areas are all covered with this plastic covering up um, the, the normal uh, tubes and things that you would see on your typical Sega. You don't see your cross um, safety that you would see on the typical AK-47. Instead, you got the safety right here. So it's quite a bit different. It's a three-round magazine. So it was really meant to be a hunting rifle. Here's the backside. You can actually set up a scope on this. And, and of course, sit up high. I thought about it, but I felt that if I really wanted to worry about long distance, this wasn't the gun for it. This was a good median, medium, median distance, middle distance kind of rifle. Again, it's a 308, so it has potential to have lots of distance. Kind of, kind of going in with the theme of. Russian guns, though I've always found, even with this one, and then I even own a Sagan 223, that I really had to work with it to get it to be accurate in a weird sort of way that I wouldn't necessarily be proud gunsmithing sort of way, probably in the backyard sort of way that's kind of it's not something you'd brag about. But I took a hammer to both of those guns to get the sights, the front sight to move over um, to get it accurate. It wasn't accurate out of the box, so that's a little bit funny. But probably keeping with what you might expect. This gun is probably the, the softest shooting um, big caliber gun that I own. It's amazing how soft this 308 shoots out of this gun. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned that it only shoots three rounds because, again, it was meant to be a hunting gun. And again, it's kind of rare in the sense that 308 and 30 out 6, somewhere around between 50 and 300 of these guns were actually shipped to the country. I mean, obviously, there's lots of Sega 308s, but true hunting rifles. So there's actually a company that built, it's kind of like CS Specs or something like that, CS Spec. That made a 10 round magazine for this gun, but you don't use typical Sega magazines for this gun either. So it's quite a bit different than your typical Sega 308. So again, it's kind of a rare gun. People don't really know a lot about it. I bought it at the time thinking it was a cheap way to get into a semi-automatic rifle. I think I bought this maybe eight years ago at probably 400 something dollars. And today I'm sure I could sell it over a thousand dollars. In fact, I've seen some crazy prices for this gun <clears throat> where it goes into several thousand dollars. Some people have tried to get out of this gun because of its rarity. But again, I don't think a lot of people know about this gun. So it doesn't have that kind of appeal to pull those kind of prices, I think. Um, but it is a fun gun. I'd love to kill something with it someday. But to be honest with you, it just comes out, shoots, shoots every now and then, and it goes back into the safe. If I ever get into long distance rifles, it probably be, it would still be a bulk gun. But I think if I could have some hogs in front of me at 100 yards, I'd love to shoot it. Now, I will say the accuracy is reasonable with this sighting system, the open sights I have on it. 
at 60 something yards, I'm getting, I don't know about mil spec, but um, at 60 something yards, I can keep a lot of the shots within an inch of each other. So not a problem at all for hunting with this gun. And again, that is me just literally pulling it out of the box and shooting every now and then freehand. This isn't um, off a bench or anything like that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it and show you a little bit about the accuracy and, the, and so forth. All right, so I'm gonna shoot at that white paper plate down there. We're talking over 60 yards between the trash can and the trees and the target, archery target. Now it's backyard redneck kind of hunting, I guess, or target practice. But that's okay, that's the beauty of not living around neighbors. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it. So this is open sights at roughly 60 yards, 65 yards or so. Not too bad of a group. Definitely would do the job. It's pie plate size is what I understand for hunting. Some of those rounds are pretty darn close to each other. And again, with open sights, with a Kalishnikov front sight that I had to bang to get it to go forward, makes it into a pretty decent little semi-automatic rifle. Big semi-automatic rifle, I guess you could say. I... Certainly not going to treat it like a battle rifle. I think I'm just going to keep it in its configuration. Anyway, I enjoyed shooting it. Um, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.